All right. Thank you all and welcome to today's workshop, Supporting Student Success with the Blackboard Retention Center. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, ways that we can measure how well our students are doing in our Blackboard courses. My name is Peter Goen. I'm the Online Analytics Coordinator here at Faculty Development. Uh, feel free if you have any more questions later on to reach out to me either by email or by phone. I'm always happy to answer everyone's questions on Blackboard and the use of Blackboard in your own courses. Okay, so today's workshop agenda over our lunch hour here. I want to talk about student success, student performance here at NIU, um, the importance of that, some of the resources that we have here on campus uh, to help you in your teaching or your students in their learning. Um, and then we'll dive into performance indicators. You know, what do we think about in our courses? And uh, the meat of the uh, workshop today will be on the Retention Center in Blackboard. If you use Blackboard in your own courses, the Retention Center allows you to monitor your students' performance and reach out to them if necessary. So we'll go over a lot of those features, how you can do those kinds of things, and then finally customizing the Retention Center yourself, because everyone's course is slightly different. So while it's set up to go right out of the box, it may not be perfect for your own class, so I'll cover a little bit about what you can do in the Retention Center in Blackboard to customize it for your own purposes. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a few more resources that we have here on campus. Okay, so student success at NIU. Uh, Northern Illinois University is currently one of many public universities, which unfortunately, because of the budget situation, has had to focus in really, really carefully on student success, student retention. These are great things that we should all be concerned about regularly, but obviously right now with the ongoing budget situation, we're a little bit more concerned than normal. There are a ton of resources on campus uh, everyone hasn't maybe already heard about. I wanted to highlight a few of these. The Office of Student Academic Success is just one unit which um, focuses on these kinds of things. One thing they do is at the very beginning of a student's career here at NIU, they send them an email uh, to see if maybe they want to sign up for what's known as MapWorks. MapWorks is a suite of performance indicators that students uh, can look at to see you know, where they might expect to have problems, as well as um, just helping the campus understand you know, who all's here on campus, how well people are doing, stuff like that. So it can help everyone here on campus kind of understand um, how well people are doing and give students the opportunity to initially think about where they may have problem points. Another thing that the OSAS does is student success coaching. So every department here on campus, or every college here on campus, as well as academic advising, has these um, experts on campus which can help students focus in on their own goals and their own plans here on campus. So if students want a little bit of extra help and support, um, these are the people to turn to if you're looking for some kind of referrals and some kind of individualized um, academic success coaching. Another initiative has been the first and second year experience. So getting students involved in campus right away, letting them know um, what's here and available on campus, that's what first and second year experience is all about. There's the UNIV 101 courses. So most entering freshmen will probably sign up for a UNIV 101 course. It's just a quick one credit course they take, uh, but it gives them some initial uh, idea about what it like it what it's like to be a student here at NIU, different uh, resources available to them like academic advising, um, the writing center, all those kinds of things, how Blackboard works. It just kind of gives them that uh, initial idea about you know what it is to be a college student here at NIU. Student faculty links is a mentoring experience. So if new students want to uh, initially connect with an advisor or with a faculty member here on campus, uh, they can do so. They can sign up for student faculty links and then these mentors will reach out to them and kind of get them involved here on campus, help them feel more welcome. 
if instead of um, faculty one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationship, they'd rather get connected with a peer though, there's Huskies Get Connected, which will be able to line them up with um, students who've been here for a while on campus, who know the different resources, who know the different um, opportunities for students to get involved in different activities on campus. So taken all together, there's a number of resources we have available to help students be connected with NIU, to help them focus on their own academic career, hopefully be able to be successful at NIU, and ultimately um, for the su success of the campus and for the state as well, um, retain these students, make sure that they're sticking with their academics and they're doing well overall on campus. Okay. Next thing I wanted to talk about is just student performance in general and how we track things in our courses. And I've listed a few different things that people think of uh, when they think about tracking students and how well they're doing in their own classes. One is just simple attendance in class. Whether or not that's face-to-face -face or online, are students showing up even? In fact, the number one predictor of student success, a lot of the learning analytics community has focused on, is just whether students show up. So tracking attendance, making sure that students are just coming to class, they're engaged with the material, um, is something that we all just kind of do naturally. We want to see from our students. Some very low performers won't attend class. Some very high performers won't attend class. So that can be mixed. But in general, um, so student success, uh, attendance in class is one of the biggest predictors of that. After that, everyone just thinks of grades. You know, I've gotten into my course, it's the first few weeks, I've maybe given them a quiz or two, they may have had an assignment already. How well have students done on these kinds of assessments? How well are they doing on the different levels in the course? So grading is one of the biggest things that um, we'll generally track in our own courses just to see how well students are doing. You know, if they earned an A or a B or below. Um, often these are very important for them going on to formally apply to a school or to apply to graduate school, things like that. So they're always, grades are always something that we're concerned about in our courses. After that's just general activity level. You know, I have students not only shown up, not only are they doing well on formal assessments, but are they turning in work on time? Are they doing all the little things that we ask of them in class? So have they you know, not only shown up, but are they doing group work with the rest of their uh, peers? Or if this is an online course, have they taken advantage of the different discussions that we've opened up in the course? Or submitted blog posts, things like that. And then finally, um, just are they behind on the work? Have they missed a bunch of deadlines? That's a really key indicator about how well or how poorly students are doing. If they need extra help, if they need someone to reach out to them for a little bit of extra support. Because uh, if they have missed a deadline, it's much more likely that they'll miss another one after that. All of these are kinds of things that we'll, we would track in our own courses pretty much automatically. Are there any others that people can think of, though, that I haven't listed here that you may, own, you may track for your own courses? I'll give people a second to type anything in the chat. Or if you want to, since we're online in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, you could respond uh, with your own microphone if you wanted to. Not seeing any, any comments so far, I'll give everyone just a few extra seconds in case they can think of anything. I know I've covered the big typical ones right here. Alrighty, well if there's nothing else, good. So I covered at least the basics for everyone, the kinds of things that we typically think about when we're trying to focus on, you know, how well are my students doing? Do they need extra support? That kind of stuff. Okay, so let's dive into the Retention Center itself. The Retention Center can be accessed in a couple of different places within Blackboard. The first one is through the Global Navigation menu. When you open up the Global Navigation menu by clicking on your name at the top, you'll see a number of different icons, including this one with an up and down arrow. If you click on that, that'll list out all of your different courses here on the side. And if you click an individual one, you'll be able to see a bunch of performance indicators listed out onto the right. 
Another way to access the full retention center though, if you want to get access to everything, is through your own course. You'll see I've taken a snippet of a screenshot here. There's the course menu in red at the top, and then down below the course management control panel, under the evaluation section, you'll see a link to the retention center itself. Once you open that up then, you'll be able to see a number of different features that let you monitor both the class as a whole, as well as individual students, which we'll take a look at here shortly. The uh, retention center though is built on a number of building blocks known as rules. And you'll see very much like I, what I mentioned earlier, there's a rule for the different kinds of things that people just naturally try to monitor anyway. So there's this course access rule, which is kind of the same thing as attendance for a face-to-face -face course. There's a grade rule for monitoring how well an individual student is doing relative to the rest of the class. An activity rule, which is much like class participation. And finally, a missed deadline rule to let you monitor um, how well students are doing or if they're falling behind in their work, things like that. Here as well, I've listed the defaults for each of these. So as I mentioned initially, the retention center is automatically set up for you with a number of default rules here to uh, help you monitor your own class. These are just the ones that are initially set up. You can tweak them to your own liking. You can add extras. We'll go over some of that a little bit later on. But here are the defaults. So um, initially, there will be a last access rule set up such that um, it monitors people and it triggers a risk alert if a student hasn't logged into your course in more than five days. Now, if you're not using Blackboard for a whole lot, that may not be terribly useful. Maybe you'll set it up much longer. Maybe you'll just um, remove it entirely, or if you expect uh, your students to be logging in every couple of days to be able to fill out discussions in the discussion forums or quizzes or things like that, maybe you'd even set this down to two or three days. For grades, uh, it checks to see whether or not the total column a student does 25% below the class average. So if the class average is say an 80, but a student is getting a um, 55 or lower, they'll be shown as at risk within the table, which we'll look at in just a second. There's also an activity rule. So how often are your students logging in, uh, engaging in discussions in the discussion forums, things like that? If their activity in the last week is 20% below the entire course average, so they've maybe just visited the discussion forums once, whereas the rest of the class has been in there, say, you know, four or five times over the last week, then they'll be shown as at risk. You know, they, they, they're missing something along the way. They haven't engaged in the class as much as you were expecting. And again, this can be tweaked too to more better suit your own purposes. And then finally, another big one, a missed deadline rule. This one triggers if a student misses any deadline once, ever. So if they've missed one deadline by more than, well, here zero days, if they miss any deadline, they're automatically seen as at risk. And again, all of these can be customized. Okay, so what does the retention center itself look like? Once you actually open up the full retention center, you'll see a screen much like this. Now here we've played around with um, some uh, phony accounts. You'll see like William Shakespeare or Napoleon Bonaparte, not actual people. This isn't real live student data, but we logged in with these uh, fake accounts just to kind of generate a little bit of an idea of what it might look like in your own course. Here initially you get uh, this bar at the top which lets you know how many students have missed any of the different kinds of um, risk alerts that might be set up, any of those rules that might be set up. So here we can see that three students triggered a grade alert and 15 triggered an access alert. So it looks like a number of students haven't logged in in quite a while. That may be in, um, something concerning or it may not, depending on how you set your own up. Um, and then underneath that, we get the actual table, which lists all of the students whether or not they have triggered any of the rules, and um, if they have triggered any of them, which ones seem to be most at risk here at the top. So you'll notice uh, Alexander Bell and William Shakespeare, they've triggered two rules, and it's possible that there are much more at risk on, say, one of these grade alerts. 
So you'll notice um, all of the rest of the students in the class, they've just triggered one or the other. So they're not seen as being quite at risk. This lets you see a snapshot of your entire course at once. It can give you a better idea about how well, how, or how on track your entire class is at the same time. This lets you get a good idea of maybe who needs a little bit more um, support in your own course, or it could give you uh, some indication that maybe your students in general just aren't getting something. Maybe um, they've missed a deadline, but it was for an assignment that they couldn't find in the course, something like that. So it can give you a little bit more insight into how your students are using the course, as well as uh, how well they're doing, too. After the uh, table, which lists your entire course, though, you are allowed to be able to monitor a few individual students. This can be good to do if, um, for instance, see here we have Robert Frost, who's a very high performer in your course. So they're doing really well. Maybe they were do maybe they were someone who wasn't doing well before that you wanted to monitor, or maybe they were someone who's doing really, really well right now, and you just want to keep an eye on them. But you can monitor anyone you want. So here's Alexander Bell, one of those people who wasn't doing um, potentially very well. You'll notice that their grade alert that they triggered, uh, they were almost 40% below average. So they're, they're really in need of some extra assistance and support in their course. The people you monitor are people you set up um, yourself. So for any of these students here, you could have um, add them to this monitoring window to give you some quick access to uh, them initially so you don't have to view their individual reports. All of that we'll look at in just a moment though. Okay, underneath the table and underneath the individual students that you're monitoring is an overall activity window into your own course. So here you can see um, assignments that you've added to the course, the discussion boards that you've created, blogs that you've added, um, announcements that you've posted recently, giving you an idea about all of those assessments which are current, which your students should be working on right now, how much activity has been going on in each of these, and um, how recently you've contacted the, uh, the students in the course too. You'll notice that there's also this little course design area, so it'll let you know uh, when was the last time that you added anything to the course. Uh, which can be very handy. Uh, both of these learner support areas giving you a, a good idea about um, how often you've been involved with the students in your course. So not only can you track um, all the different activities and the different kinds of things and the level of activities that your students have in the course, but also your own activity in the course, giving you a better idea about, okay, you know, I need to stay involved with my students. Um, how involved am I staying? So all of this combined you a window into your student success, the feedback, um, how much everyone's been engaged in the course, which is very, very handy. You are able to, to drill down a little bit farther though. So here we can see uh, in this table, in the risk table, I clicked on Alexander Bell's grade alerts. And after doing so, I'm given all a list of all the different alerts that they've triggered for grades. So if I had set up multiple, you would actually see multiple entries here. There's just one right now. And then how well they've done on each of those. So there was just the default grade rule, 25% below class average. You can see that they're unfortunately way past that. They're at 39.25%. As well as um, showing you the overall grade and where they fall relative to the class average. So the class average was about 80. Unfortunately, they're at a 41 right now, which is really not great. You can see that um, this window also gives you the ability to quickly set up a monitor for them or to contact them, which we'll look at a little bit more later too. So this lets you uh, very quickly get into your course, look at the different students, click on the different rules here, and see which ones they've triggered and why. If you want to look at it as student themselves, though, you can just click on their name and you'll be taken to a page where it lists all of the details for that student, as well as a few extra things. So here I had clicked on Hernando Cortez. I noticed that they have been flagged as being at risk. Uh, the rule that they had triggered was a grade alert, and this one's not very good either. So I can see that um, they're 47% below average. 
if any other rules had been triggered for them, they would also be listed in this table, and we would see exactly why uh, they had triggered that particular alert. You can also see the time that they last triggered it too. So you notice that with um, Hernando, uh, he had triggered it just 40 minutes ago in this particular course. Below all the different risk factors for your students, you'll also see a list of all the times that you reached out to that student, um, which can be very handy later on if you need to um, go back and see all of your different um, conversations with them. You can also add private notes for a student. So maybe, you know, I plan on following up with them in office hours at a particular time. Um, or this student didn't turn in a particular assignment, things of that nature, which you just want to, uh, notes that you want to add to help monitor how well your students are doing in your course. So this gives you a little bit better of a window for an individual student, whereas on the previous screen, the entire risk table showed you your class at once. From here as well, you can also set up monitoring for an individual student. You can add them to that monitor window on the main retention center screen, as well as uh, contact them through the built-in email function uh, in Blackboard, just as you could on the uh, rules alerts uh, details box. So communicating as well. We already looked at uh, the two different ways that you can communicate with your students. On the main retention center screen, if you click any of the little alert boxes for an individual student, you can set up monitoring as well as uh, notify them through email. Or if you've clicked onto an individual student, you can notify them through email on that page as well. And when you do so, it sends them an email through the standard send email feature. Here you can see uh, you can add, um, the subject and you can add a message and you can uh, send that through Blackboard. That will contact them at their standard Blackboard uh, email account, which for students should automatically be their ZID email. Uh, when you do so, again, that'll be added to the notification history between you and that student on the individual student's page. So it, the whole idea is monitoring students and then communicating them and reaching out to them whenever necessary. Maybe this could be a high performing student too, not only someone who um, has fallen behind in some way, but if they've done really well, you could reach out to them and give them a little bit of extra encouragement. You know, good job. Um, thank you for your um, engagement in class or helping out with other students, things of that nature too. Okay, so now I want to talk a bit about customizing the retention center. So we already looked at the retention center, different rules. I mentioned all the default rules that are set up. But when you're in here, you know, maybe that 25% below class average, you want it to be a little bit narrower. Or instead of um, narrower, you want it to be a little bit wider, depending on how many assessments there are in your course or, um, how many points there are for each of those, or for all the different rules, you can actually tweak those. Once you're on the main retention center page, you'll see a dark gray button labeled customize in the upper right hand corner. Clicking that will allow you to add or modify all those different activity rules. And here we are on that page. You'll see a list of all of the different rules here that have been created and that have been monitored. There are the different default rules, which if you hover your mouse cursor over them, you'll see a little gray drop-down icon. If you click that, you can go in and you can edit or even delete any of them that you want. And here you'll see a list of all of those that I've added to uh, my practice course. So there are the four default rules that were set up for me. And then there's another one that I wanted to add as well. I named it um, High Flyers, based it on a grade rule, and said instead of the standard default grade rule being um, if a student falls below the class average by 25%, I instead wanted to notify myself if any students are above the class average by 25%. So maybe I reach out to them and I ask them, you know, um, I've got some other people in the class that might need a little bit of peer support. These are the people that I might want to identify to um, help me uh, with the rest of the class. They're getting the material. I know that they're doing really well. I want them to help out uh, their peers in the course. So I can set up, instead of um, a poor performer's rule, instead of very high performer's rule. 
You'll notice too that uh, in all of these different rules, I'm allowed to designate whether or not they are flagged in a risk table. So by default, let me go back a screen. By default, the risk table shows me any students here, flags them if they hit any of these rules, but I don't have to enable that particular feature. Instead, with any rule, I can decide whether or not it uh, shows them as at risk in the risk table. So for my high performers, I don't want to show them as at risk. Instead, I just want to use this uh, rule to monitor how they're doing in the course. Okay. So once we've gone in and we've decided we want to add a new rule, I look at the uh, rules list and then above it, I click on this create rules button. And then that'll ask me which of the different four, four different kinds of rules I want to set up. For each of those, they, they can be customized in a number of different ways. Here's just one example that I've added and this is a uh, course access rule. This one's really, really simple. Here you can see all it requires is just a name and then how many days since um, students last accessed the course. So by default, we have one that's based on five days since last accessed, but maybe I am not as concerned about that five days. Maybe instead I want to bump it up to say 10 or 15 days. I could create a second rule for my course, I could leave the original rule but decide to not include it in the risk table. We'll look at what happens uh, with that if you decide not to add a particular rule to the risk table. So maybe it's only slightly risky if students haven't logged in in the last five days, but I do want to include it in the risk table if they haven't logged in within the last 15 days. And once I'm creating the rule, I can decide whether or not it's included in the risk table just by clicking these little yes or no check buttons. And then after I've um, gotten through configuring this particular rule, I just click the submit button and then it'll add that rule to my list here and it'll begin tracking in the risk table. Okay. A few of the features with the individual rules themselves. Here are all the different things that you can set up for the different rules. So the course access one, I already mentioned, it's uh, the number of days since a student last accessed the course. And you can set up multiple of them, as I mentioned. You'll want to configure this um, primarily when your, your class is being um, mostly or largely online. That's when it's really most appropriate for a course. If you only post your syllabus or if you only run, say, a midterm or a final in your course, it'll be a little bit less um, risky. I mean, if a student hasn't logged in since the midway of the semester and they only now have to turn in a final paper or fill out the final exam online, you're not going to be terribly worried that your students haven't been logging in in the last five days or so, something like that. So you may want to uninclude it from the risk table. You may want to tweak it and say uh, it's only uh, students are only seen as at risk if it's say 30 days since they haven't logged into the course to check their grades or something like that. Other than the course access rule, the grade rule is one that can be very extensively customized. You can decide whether or not a um, particular column is the one that's being tracked. By default, it is the one that's set to the external grade column which by default is the total column for your course. But if your column, if the one uh, you want to track uh, overall in your course is instead the weighted total column, you're not using the standard total column, but you've set your um, final grades up in a different manner, you would want to track that one. Or you could track multiple. So you could track the overall total in your course, checking to see whether or not the students are doing well overall. But you could also, if there's a very large um, paper or test in your course, maybe you want to track that as well. So you could designate an, another rule and track another column in the grade center um, to see how well your students are doing against that one too. And then, as I mentioned, you can track whether or not students fall above or below here either a specific grade point so by default, uh, grading rules are set up to track against the class average, but maybe you want to change that and you want to say whether or not 
students aren't doing just relative to their peers, but overall where you think students should be in your course, or if there's a particular worrisome grade percentage. So I could say, you know, I want to make sure that my students are doing um, at least, say, an 80% in my course on um, a major research paper that I have set up. I could actually define a grade rule very specifically just for one assignment instead of looking at the overall grade for everyone in the course. So it lets me tweak things a little bit more within my course, customize it really to how I think my students will or should be using um, my course, engaging with the materials, and how well they should be um, assessed on all of that activity. Otherwise, uh, course activity is another very uh, simple one within your own course. And here it defines um, how many days, weeks, months, has been um, how much your students are really uh, engaging with the material in your course. So uh, how many times they've logged in, how many times they have uh, posted in the discussion forums, and you can track that over a period of time. There's also missed deadlines, which is another really important one. If you have a lot of um, important uh, content in your course, a lot of important assessments in your course, you can see how well your students are doing and you can track that um, either overall, how many um, overall deadlines your students have missed, or if there's a very uh, uh, important deadline that they have coming up. Again, like uh, some kind of research paper, or if you deliver your midterm online, uh, whether or not they miss one of these very large formal assessments, uh, you can track those too. If you're tracking overall missed deadlines, you're allowed to specify uh, how many deadlines over how many days uh, they've missed these deadlines. So if a student goes in and they miss, say, two deadlines over five days, all of a sudden they're missing quite a bit of content in my course. Although for someone else, maybe you aren't delivering that much of your course, so perhaps you just track a specific deadline and you just want to make sure that your students are um, not missing it by more than one or two days, something like that. Because often we'll let our students, uh, give our students a, lee a little leeway here or there by a day or two, something like that. Finally, as I mentioned, you can decide for all these different rules you might want to set up in your course in the Retention Center, you can decide whether or not they're added to the risk table. So the risk table will give you an idea about how well your class is doing, um, but it flags everyone that misses any of these included rules. So it should only be enabled on each of the rules if you think that these are things that are very important for your students and you want to make sure that um, their performance hinges on that, that you're tracking those. Okay, so what happens if you don't turn on one of these rules? So the overall risk table here, it lets me see who's triggered which rules, but if the rules aren't ones that will be flagged in the table, there's a box underneath the individual students that I'm tracking, which shows me how many students have triggered the different ones. So here we can see, I set up a different rule, and I can see um, how many students are actually doing 10% above the class average. So I can get an idea, okay, here are my students who are doing poorly insofar as grades are concerned, but I can also get an idea for how many students in my course are doing really, really well too. So here I've got 20 students who are above the class average by 10%. Which is um, kind of kind of cool. If I have say 40 or 50 people in my class, that's quite a few people who are doing pretty well in the course. So I know that um, a lot of students are on track, a lot of students are doing well, but at the same time there are a few who have been falling behind who I may need to reach out to. Okay, and that was a very quick um, demonstration of the Grade Center itself. I just wanted to at this point. Uh, ask, are there any questions about how the Grade Center works that you may have, or how the Retention Center works, you may have about the Retention Center, any customizations or uh, anything that you want to see? I want to quickly do a small demonstration of the Retention Center briefly afterwards. So I'll open up the floor here for our participants. Any questions about the grades or about the Retention Center itself?
Again, the Retention Center is a great tool that we have automatically built into uh, Blackboard to be able to monitor our students' performance, both poor and good. Okay, since I'm not seeing any other questions immediately, I want to go on and quickly do a small demonstration of the Blackboard uh, Retention Center. So I'll go ahead and open a course up here and get ready to share my screen with everyone. So let me go ahead and get Blackboard open just so you can see, you all can see what this looks like. Okay, it says I'm sharing, but for me it's a blank screen right now. Is everyone seeing uh, Blackboard or not? No, unfortunate. Okay, let me stop and restart this then. Just a green screen. Yeah, it was showing that to me too. That's interesting. And I know um, they're constantly working on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, so it's possible things just aren't working quite correctly right now. Let me try this once more. Hmm. Okay, I've got a green screen again, which I assume means for everyone else that having some difficulties. Same, okay. Let's give it a minute. We can certainly give it a little minute here. Otherwise, I may try opening it up in a different browser. Let me try that. Try sharing something from a different browser. Maybe that will help. Okay, so I've opened up an extra window in a different browser here. Let me try sharing that really quickly. <laughs> well, that's better, but I'm still not seeing... Uh, does it look like a, a blank window for all of you? And again, thank you to my participants here for chatting with me. Well, white screen, okay. Hmm. Well, that is unfortunate, but that's fine. I just wanted to quickly show how we set those alerts up. Um, but since we've already kind of looked at that in uh, the screenshots themselves, that may just have to suffice for today. All right. If there are any questions that you have, again, you can reach me. I would be happy to sit down with anyone too and walk through all of this. Instead, I'll just get back to my presentation. Okay. All righty. Okay. Any other questions about the retention center, its use, or um, let me throw this out to my panel here. Can you see yourselves using this in your course? Are there any ways that you think you might want to uh, tweak some of the alerts for your own course and why? I'm really curious how you all might use this in your own courses. Ah, okay. Yeah, can we print a report in the retention center? Uh, not within the retention center itself. It has no reporting features built in. It assumes that you just use that dashboard screen to kind of monitor all of your students there at once. However, there are instead um, reports built into Blackboard, which can give you an idea about class activity, uh, grades, that kind of thing. That's a really good question. Well, let's see if I can find some help material on those really quickly. 
um, could also share that. So yeah, um, instead, actually, let me point those out. I do have a screenshot where we have some of those listed. Let me pull that one up. Otherwise, any other questions on the retention center? Okay, so I'm going to pull up a screenshot here of accessing the retention center from earlier. You'll notice that there is a, instead of just a link for the retention center under evaluation, there's also a link to the course reports. And from there, there are a number of reports similar to the rules within the retention center. So there's a uh, course activity report. There is also an assessment report to see how well your students are doing relative to each other, which you can then click on their individual names to get um, a list of all the different assignments and their grades for each. Uh, that generates a few extra graphs and charts, and it's automatically printable to PDF for you. So kind of similar to um, what you're asking about here. So while the retention center doesn't automatically generate some of those reports, there are reports available under the course reports link. Okay, any other questions on the retention center? Otherwise, I wanted to end this hour by mentioning a few other resources that are available uh, here at NIU for your students. Definitely things to be aware of here on campus. There are so many resources for them uh, which can help them succeed at NIU in their classes as well as beyond. So there's the academic advising department here at, um, at NIU. Most schools, most departments do have their own individualized advising, but there is also uh, the university-wide academic advising department too, which can help students, route students to on uh, different avenues, um, refer them to places, and help them as well. Um, so that they can get individualized help for their own career here uh, at NIU. There's also the access tutoring department. So if students are looking for individual tutors, I would definitely uh, route them to the access tutoring. Your own departments may have um, a special tutoring for your classes too, but there's also access to be aware of. If students are writing papers for your classes, uh, one thing that helps pretty much everyone here on campus is the University Writing Center. Uh, a lot of us will write papers at different times throughout our careers here, and the University Writing Center can help um, at any level, from uh, research papers, just getting started with that, to uh, you know, formatting of theses or dissertations. Uh, a great resource for a lot of the international students here on campus too, whose uh, language isn't, whose first language isn't English. Um, so a wealth of experience and a wealth of help is available at the University Writing Center. And um, also the Deacon Davis Chance program here on campus. So if students who haven't performed particularly well in high school still want to try to get into NIU, uh, the Chance program offers a lot of individualized support for those students. So I'll definitely uh, let them know about that too. Often they'll be contacted uh, when they first um, apply to NIU and when um, application is going through, you know, we'll uh, people will look for students who look like they just might need a little bit of extra support to succeed here, so Chance often reaches out directly to them. Are there any other programs here at NIU that you can think of um, that would greatly help students succeed uh, throughout their careers? So I just listed a few and just briefly talked about a number of these, but there are so many resources here at NIU either in your own departments or overall. Must have hit the highlights then, that's fine. Hopefully I've given everyone a good idea about um, student success here at NIU, all the resources available, and hopefully covered something that was interesting and useful for you all today, one small resource that's built into Blackboard itself that's automatically available and that's customized, customizable for your own purposes uh, in the retention center. So thank you all again for joining me here over the lunch hour. 
And if you have any other questions about the Retention Center, Blackboard in general, teaching with technology here at NIU, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to help. Uh, that is uh, my contact information there. Uh, please feel free to get in touch with me. Love to help.